Can you all see um, just the PowerPoint I have up or can you see everything that's on my screen? I just see your PowerPoint. Okay, good. All right, well, I don't really wanna waste anyone's time. So I think I'm gonna get started. Um, I'm recording this um, to put up on the chapter resources section of the website anyway, so. And I will send out a link afterwards. So yeah, let's just get started. I really don't think it'll take longer than 30 to 45-ish minutes um, for me to go every through everything. Um, so yeah, so tonight I'm going to be talking to you all about um, the Stream Girls program and how you can adopt this program into your chapters, youth education programming. Um, I'm probably going to keep you both unmuted at this point because it's not a lot of people. <laughs> so I think we'll be fine. Um, but yeah, you actually can, um, you can mute yourself or unmute yourself, or whatever. So, um, and feel free to ask questions throughout it. And Barbara, feel free to add when you would like. Um, let's see. So just really quickly, Ruthie, you already know who I am. I'm Bianca um, McGrath-Martinez, and I'm the Youth Programs Coordinator for Colorado Trout Unlimited. Um, so Stream Girls has been a big part of what I've been working on uh, with CTU and Barbara as well. So Barbara, um, she's the Regional VP, Vice President for our North Chapters, um, and also the President of the local chapter, the St. Vrain Anglers. Um, in Longmont, and then also the co-director of our annual river conservation and fly fishing camp. Um, so as you both know, Barbara is a huge part of String Girls as well. Um, she leads most of our events and has helped um, a lot in implementing it in Colorado. So let's go ahead and move forward and talk a little bit about the program. If I can make this work. There we go. So Really quickly to start off, um, Stream Girls is Trout Unlimited's outdoor STEM program specifically for Girl Scouts. So this watershed experience employs STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math, plus recreation and arts to explore a local stream. Girls complete a variety of activities in their local stream and have the opportunity to observe and experience the stream as scientists, anglers, and artists with uh, about eight different activities. So our current program accommodates Girl Scouts who are juniors and cadets, which um, usually correlates to grades uh, four through eight. Um, over the course of multiple sessions, Girl Scouts complete different activities in addition to a series of discussions and observations in order to receive the custom Stream Girls patch. On that first uh, slide, which I'll show you. So that is the Stream Girls patch that they get at the end of the day. 
Um, so the girls start the day off with a stream walk and the objective of the stream walk is to have the Girl Scouts deeply all aspects of the stream. So using their field hand notebooks as guidance, girls will gather information such as the location of the stream, they'll look at the weather conditions, the depth, width, width clarity, and color of the stream. They'll make notes of the smells and sounds that they hear, um, as well as making descriptions on the bottom of the stream um, and the surrounding riparian zone. So girls will also take note of the presence of wildlife and human activity in, in and around the stream. So next is the go with the flow activity where the Girl Scouts will use a circular object, um, a stopwatch, a yardstick, measuring tape, and survey flags to measure the flow of the stream. They'll build an understanding about the movement of water and how human and riparian conditions can affect that. Um, next, the Girl Scouts will be introduced to flies and basic fly tying techniques. Each girl gets their own um, fly tying kit and will be introduced to a basic fly such as the San Juan worm, woolly bugger, or basic midge. Um, and if time permits, the girls will have the tools and materials to experiment with tying, um, creating whatever they want, whatever makes sense to them. Um, and then they do a macroinvertebrate survey. And so this is when they set out to discover the invertebrate life of the stream and measure the abundance and diversity of this life as a sign of long-term water quality. So the girls will go through a few different processes to collect the macro samples. Um, it really depends on the kind of stream you have, but um, some of the girls will be turning over rocks and other debris around the stream. And sometimes they'll be using the kick net um, to kick up the stream substrate into the net. Um, and then they all will observe and categorize the aquatic insects using spoons, um, a tarp and magnifying tools, and then the ice cube trays to put the bugs in based on what kind of uh, macroinvertebrate they are. And so then they count the macros and use the numbers to determine the health of the stream. So the girls will also the basic mechanics of fly fishing. They will learn about the different parts of the fly rod um, and then they will get a chance to practice their casting with the, a hula hoop target and then stuff fish. And so the last activity of the day is the stream scavenger hunt and um, craft activity. So the girls are broken up into teams and they're given survey flags that they will use to identify the nine ingredients that make a healthy stream. So they work together to identify water riffles, rocks, trees, wood, short plants, um, the sky, animals, and bugs. Um, and they get uh, beads that correlate to those nine different ingredients. They get to make a, either a bracelet, necklace, or keychain, um, really whatever they want. We give them recycled fly line to do that. Okay, so. A quick overview of the day. Um, so the Stream Girls program was originally designed to take place over a weekend, actually. It's more of like a camp thing. But in Colorado, we shortened the event to a one day um, event to increase our ability to have this program and reach as many communities of girls as possible. So if it's just in a day, we don't have to do background checks, we don't have to worry about accommodation, that type of thing. So it's just easier for the chapters. To um, so the program starts at 8 a.m. and ends around 5.30 or 6 p.m. and volunteers will typically arrive around 7.30 a.m. We always serve coffee, pastries, and have fruit for the participants and volunteers and parents as they arrive. Um, sometimes we even have hot chocolate if whoever brings it. And we provide blank name tags for both the volunteers and Girl Scouts and um, part of their activities getting started is to create their own name tag and um, make it kind of streamulated or whatever they want um, using colored pencils and markers. So as they walk in, we give them their notebook um, that they'll have throughout the day. So they write their name on that. Um, you can actually see the notebook in the picture on the right. Um, I don't have pictures of the notebooks weirdly. So yeah, that's what they'll use throughout the day that has all their activities. Um, and so actually on the day of the event, each Girl Scout will need to provide three different waivers. Um, I'll show you what those waivers are later on, but they will have received them prior to the event. So they should have them already filled out and ready for you, but sometimes that's not the case. Um, and that is up to the event leaders to collect all this information. 
get it back to me after the event if I'm not there already. So once all the Girl Scouts have arrived, we'll introduce the day. We typically try to introduce the river and Trout Unlimited and give some context about the location and history and why this event is happening. For example, when we did the event at Bear Creek Nature Center in Colorado Springs, we were able to utilize their native greenback cutthroat exhibit to talk about the creek and its um, significance to native trout recovery. And so after that short introduction, the girls and volunteers will do an icebreaker to get to know each other a little bit better. Um, so after that, the Girl Scouts are split into four different teams for the beginning activity, which is the stream walk. So there will be two to three volunteers for each group of four Girl Scouts, if the numbers work that way. Um, we typically, or we cap the event at 24 Girl Scouts. Um, so the girls are responsible for coming up with a stream related name for them. And they will be in these teams more than once throughout the day, uh, which makes it easier for us to track them and also organize the day. Um, Streamwalk activity lasts about an hour, including their discussion and reflection, which is also guided by their field notebook. So the girls will get a break after that, um, eat them snacks and a lot of bathroom breaks. Um, and then the two, two Girl Scout teams go to complete the fly casting activity. The other two will complete the go with the flow activity and they'll switch after 40 minutes. After completing these two activities, we transition inside for lunch. Um, both Girl Scouts and volunteers will be required to bring their own packed lunches. We do this to avoid any allergy mishaps and all of that business. Um, and that was actually decided under the guidance of the Girl Scouts of Colorado. So, and then there will always be, you know, snacks and water provided if girls are lacking in a lunch or something. Um, so after that, after lunch, the macro vertebrate survey and fly tying are done similarly to the two previous activities. So, um, two Girl Scout teams complete one, and then the other two complete the other. They switch after 75 minutes. Um, we like to pair these activities so that they can make the connection to the bugs that they find and the ones that they tie on their vices. So they, they break again after completing, or they break again before completing the second to last activity. For the, um, for the scavenger hunt, they break into the same teams that they began, began the day with um, for the stream walk. And then they have 45 minutes to identify um, all those parts of the stream that I had mentioned before and report back to their volunteer leaders. So after that, the girls transition inside and create their bracelets or whatever. And while they're doing their craft, we hand out an evaluation to the Girl Scouts, which we already have made up. I'll show you all the resources later. Um, and this year, we'll begin to evaluate troop leaders and parents as well. So after this, they receive their patches and certificates and then do a friendship circle and take a group photo. So we've been very fortunate to have the founder of Girl Scouts, great, great grand niece, um, be a part of the Stream Girls events that we've had so far. Um, so she, I think she's a member of the Colorado, well, she is a member of the Colorado Women Fly Fishers and she may be engaged with Rocky Mountain Fly Casters. I'm not sure, Ruthie, you would know better. But, um, and so she uh, is usually the one to do the certificates and patches at the end of the day. And they have the, you know, the Girl Scout handshake or whatever and the friendship circle um, because that's definitely more of a Girl Scout thing than a trial unlimited thing. But um, yeah, so then that ends the day and that's usually around 5.30 p.m. So usually earlier than the 6 p.m. cutoff, but um, it, it all depends. So... That is that, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about the partnership um, that we um, at CTU have established with the Girl Scouts of Colorado specifically, and exactly where the chapters will fit into that partnership. So String Girls was created through a partnership between National Trout Unlimited and Girl Scouts of America. The Colorado Council and Barbara um, decided to bring String Girls to Colorado back when I had first started, well before I even started. Um, so around 2018, I guess, um, and we were able to connect with the Girl Scouts of Colorado's community partnerships manager and establish a beneficial, mutually beneficial partnership with them um, right when I started. Um, and so the ultimate goal of the partnership is to establish Dream Girls in several regions um, to get this program to girls that would not usually see a program like this in their area. Um, and then also to 
demonstrate the program's effectiveness through evaluation and feedback. So we have identified each um, entity's roles and responsibilities within this partnership, which I will now tell you about. So as it was established in the partnership with um, GSCO, which is Girl Scouts of Colorado, um, CTU is expected to provide volunteer training programming and program equipment. Um, the council will maintain the relationship with the Girl Scouts of Colorado, will advertise within our social media and our website, will work to recruit volunteers for stream girls and specifically from our pool, which I can talk about later, and will manage volunteer communications and manage event registration through our uh, database that we use for that type, for event, events and things like that. Um, so the chapter will be responsible for identifying an event leader from the chapter and recruiting additional volunteers from your region and cultivating partnerships with like-minded groups or organizations to recruit, recruit even more volunteers, and then also identifying a, um, a local venue. So, um, so the Girl Scouts Colorado, they are responsible for recruiting the actual Girl Scouts and they'll promote the event within their networks and provide staff support if needed. Um, I, honestly, I think this partnership is kind of ideal for chapters um, as it is not really your responsibility to get the par participants. So the Girl Scouts have an extensive network, um, troops and participants all throughout the state. So that takes a huge chunk of the work um, from you guys um, for putting on this event. And then before I move on, I wanted to see if there are any questions about these roles or Barbara, if there's anything you'd like to add about that. And if not, you can, or if you think of something, you can put it in the chat box and, or ask me later. Yeah, I think, uh, can you hear, can you hear me? Um, you're still kind of faint, but if I think if you yell, maybe Ruthie might be able to hear you, but maybe it's just me. <laughs> it's faint to me as well, but <laughs> I'm okay. I'm trying to adjust this. Uh, can you hear me better now? A, a little bit, <laughs> not the best. Is, is this any better? I think I think if you said something, I could hear you. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's try this. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think you know the thing that um, chapter leadership just needs to be really clear on is um, the the role of the youth uh, coordinator at CTU takes care of all the communication with the Girl Scouts of Colorado. And so the chapter's role then is really around hosting the event. Um, we help with recruiting volunteers, but we, you know, we wanna bring volunteers from the chapters also and mm -hmm. any other partnerships you might have. Um, and so the, the, their role is around recruiting the volunteers, finding a suitable venue which is really a critical piece of this to the success of a stream girls is having a suitable venue. Uh, and, um, and then after that, um, it's pretty much uh, kind of a canned thing. And um, uh, having a, uh, a leader, you know, somebody that's willing to train to become a stream girl leader out of the chapters is the third thing that's really important to the future, the, or the sustainability. Um, Yanka and I are available for kicking off the first one, but we can't do every Stream Girl event in the state of Colorado, um, because then we would have no free weekends. And um, so our, what we're really trying to do there is to provide that training also. So, um, it, it works pretty well. The, 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 the Girl Scout Council is really good. They have programming um, and all of their troops are um, out there looking for suitable programming and they're really excited to have any kind of outdoor programming. 
So that piece of this works really, really well. And, um, and then as Trout Unlimited, we just focus on the delivery and that's what we're good at too. So right. I think the partnership works really well together. Yeah, agreed. Um, Bianca, are you going to talk about the volunteers' responsibilities through this? Because at some point I'd like to summarize that if you don't cover it. Um, no, I did not put that in there. But yeah, at the so end, I think that'd at the end, be... after you go through your program, I'll summarize kind of what the volunteers' responsibilities are through the course of the day. Okay, cool. You May said I ask a question then? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the training that I signed up for down in Littleton, is that leadership training or volunteer training? It's volunteer training. Okay. Yeah. Because that has been a real challenge uh, for me in finding additional volunteers. And I was wondering if you had any recommendations because I've talked with a lot of people and I couldn't get anyone else to commit to that training. So therefore it, it, it just concerns me going forward. If I'm the only vo trained volunteer up here, I'm wondering, are there other people from Greeley that are being trained or how are we gonna staff that event? Right, so um, we have eight volunteers signed up for the Greeley event. Oh, good. Seven or eight. Um, okay. We already have a pool of over 32 volunteers. Okay. Um, so, but we're always at trying to add to it. Um, gotcha. And we do have some volunteers that are from the northern region. Um, and yeah, you won't be the only one, Ruthie. And, <laughs> yeah, and, um, and, you know, we understand too that um, there are people that can't attend the volunteer training if we find ourselves, you know, somebody really wants to engage in this and somebody that's trained knows them and knows, the, you know, that they're, they're a strong volunteer, we can do some on-site training. We just okay. can't kick off an event with, you know, 60% or 80% of our volunteers not having gone through the training. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. It does. Thank you. Okay. Um, cool. Thank you, Barbara. So yeah, we'll, we'll come back at that on the, well, do you want to speak on volunteer responsibilities right now? That might be this might be where it fits in. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll talk about that briefly then. So okay. um, the way that these events have been going is there's a leader that kind of ramrods the day. Um, and tells everybody what to do and where to go, basically. Um, and uh, so, and that person also will lead the, um, you know, the introduction. Um, all the activities have, or not all of them, but a lot of them have reflections and discussions. So depending how the timing is going on the day, um, that person also leads the, uh, the reflections and the dis and um, discussions, uh, particularly after the street walk, that's when we always have a reflection and discussion and the girls talk about what they observed. Um, after that, sometimes just moving the kids is really hard. Some of them, some groups are much slower than others. Um, and so that person kind of keeps their eye on the time uh, and how the group is moving and whether we need to shorten some things in order to go through all of the activities. You know, we crunched this down to a day at the request of Colorado Girl Scout Council. Um, and um, it, it's a big job to get all of these activities in a really short period of time. Um, so the, the volunteers then at the beginning the volunteers are responsible for um, engaging the girls, um, kind of getting them, working on their name badges, um, and, from, and you know, kind of pointing out their field notebooks. There's a couple pages in the beginning that they can fill out. And so our first responsibility at vol as volunteers are just kind of to welcome the kids um, and focus them in a little bit. Um, we do an icebreaker together 
And then after the icebreaker, we break the kids up. Um, we, we, we split the kids up. Uh, we, the last part of the icebreaker, we kind of figure out who's got what shoe size. And a big goal behind this is to get the kids in the stream. So we have uh, hip boots. We have 24 pairs of hip boots. And so we divvy them up uh, according to shoe size as best as we can. And the volunteers, your second responsibility then is to help the kids to transition into getting these hip boots on, which is always a little bit of a, amusement for them. It's really different for a lot of them. Um, so um, when we go through the training, we familiarize everybody with the equipment also. Um, and then the volunteers will be leaders in the stream walk. Um, and so we split the girls up into four teams. Um, and then depending on, um, you know, usually it's like two volunteers per team. Um, and then that te those teams can kind of break into smaller groups. But the volunteers are responsible for um, inquiry-based learning. So we're guiding but not lecturing, basically. Um, and we'll spend some time on that at the training, too. Um, so the, vo the, the volunteers are responsible for keeping time and being back at the meeting place, you know, at the, the designated time at the end and beginning of activities. Um, then, you know, based on, then our next activity is uh, flow measurement and casting. So based on your individual skills and what you're interested in, um, the volunteers will be responsible for either um, leading or supporting the flow measurement or the casting. So, uh, and um, there'll be like a lead volunteer that explains what is being done and then um, people that are basically helping the kids one-on-one. -on -one. But we want them to do most of it. Um, when it comes to the casting side, we you know, have quite a few volunteers. We kind of weight that heavier um, to um, instruct the kids in the proper casting stroke. Uh, and, and then again, somebody in that volunteer group is responsible to be a timekeeper. So we always have somebody being responsible for being a timekeeper. Um, and then in the, and we run each activity, when we split the girls into two groups, we run them twice and the volunteers stick with the activity. So if your activity is measuring flow, you'll just stick with that activity and run it through both groups. Uh, and we do the same thing with the macro invertebrate identification and the fly tying. So we have a mixture of people. Some of them know how to tie flies, some of them don't. Um, typically what we do is if, they, if you know how to tie flies, we put you in the fly tying team. Um, there is a leader that um, demonstrates and instructs and the rest of the volunteers uh, will kind of hover over the kids and assist them um, where, when they're having difficulty um, and provide them some one-on-one -on -one instruction. Uh, and the, uh, the remainder of the team that's supporting the macro invertebrates, um, those volunteers will be, there'll be a lead volunteer that kind of explains the protocol, what we're doing, and then the remainder of the volunteers support it. A big part of that activity is teaching the kids how to use um, a dichotomous key. Um, and again, all along in that inquiry-based learning, um, figuring out how to do it themselves. And so we guide them on that. Um, the last activity, the scavenger hunt, we kind of stand back on that one. And our the volunteer responsibilities there are really kind of more limited to safety, making sure everybody's safe and keeping the group kind of corralled and um, you know, the cat's herded basically and uh, focused on, on the mission uh, of, of that activity. Um, and, um, and then at the end, um, the volunteers um, are also responsible for helping, um, you know, kind of corral all the gear back together, get things um, cleaned up. Kids also help with that too. So just briefly then, that's kind of an overview of some of the volunteer responsibilities. Awesome, thank you. 
Um, yeah, cool. Um, so moving forward, let's see. So yeah, the equipment kit. Um, so as Barbara was talking about, we have a lot of, the, well, we have all of the equipment that you would need to um, put on an event. So with grant funding that we received back in 2019, I believe, um, Barbara and I put together this equipment kit specifically for stream girls. Um, it has everything you would need, including the hip waders and a variety of sizes. Um, we have also put in, in for additional funding and are hoping to and will most likely be purchasing a second kit um, as the program grows and spreads out geographically. Um, so the leader of the event will be responsible for obtaining the kit from our storage unit in Denver. Um, if we get that second kit, we'll put that somewhere else, not in the same spot. Um, and you can also coordinate with me if it makes sense to do that. But, um, and also making sure the equipment is put back as it was found and, you know, make me aware or whoever's in my position of anything that needs to be replaced or replenished or repaired or anything like that. So, um, and I'll really quickly show you the document that we have um, that has everything from the equipment kit. Let's see if I can do this. Um, all right. So let me just here it is. All right. So here's the document that shows everything that's in the equipment kit, and you can see it has the quantity. Um, and then notes regarding all of those um, objects. So every um, activity covered for this. And I'm actually we'll, not, not seeing that. Oh, well, you're not seeing it? Your email. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's worrisome. Um, okay, I'll try and figure that out and show you at the end because I'm going to show you the entire manual and that's in there. So, okay. Um, okay. Can you see the um, PowerPoint now? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so really, when it comes down to it, the remaining costs for the chapter, um, because we have this grant funding currently, um, is going to be for the, the venue, which can really range um, and vary. And a lot of places have nonprofit discounts. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then snacks and coffee, um, which we kind of estimate to be around $50. Um, and I'm not, I'm going to avoid trying to show you that document just for time's sake, but I'll show you at the end. So talking about the venue, um, as Barbara mentioned earlier, it is really key to have a venue that meets kind of all of these requirements. So um, you're, you're going to need an indoor facility to accommodate 40 to 50 people. And that will include the 24 Girl Scouts, the around 15 leaders and parents, um, and about 10 10 to 12 stream girls volunteers. So this indoor facility will be used to gather, eat lunch and take breaks, um, tie flies without any wind, <laughs> and then a place to keep uh, belongings and conclude the day with the patch ceremony. So there will also need to be restrooms and parking for around 20 to 30 vehicles. Um, the venue will also need to have a safe need to have safe stream access. So stream access should accommodate being able to spread four scout groups out for the stream walk. Um, and that's at least 200 to 300 feet apart or a few minutes apart um, so that they can investigate the, you know, the water depth, the pools and riffles, substrate, things like that. Um, so the river or stream should be shallow and not too fast moving, um, not too far from the facility to maximize time um, in between activities. Um, and there needs to be good locations for macro surveys. So the stream access, um, we need that. And then we need a flat area to be able to observe the insects on the tarp. And then also good locations for the flow measurement activity, activity where girls can stand out in the water and also reach the other side of the, uh, the river, the bank, um, to be able to get that measurement. And then lastly, there will need to be an open area for the casting instruction. So something like a field or a parking lot where girls can do that. So as far as re recruiting volunteers, um, that will be, as Barbara mentioned, another role, and I mentioned, another role for the chapter. 
Um, so when we implemented this program here in Colorado, Bar as Barbara mentioned, we worked to create a pool of volunteers. Um, we were going off Dan O'Mass's model, um, for, so what he did for the Native Trout Recovery Projects. Um, so actually last year we were able to recruit about 50 to 60 volunteers into our pool actually. And that, and that number has continued to increase as we have announced uh, our new events for 2020. Um, so people who wanted to be involved last year and just the dates didn't line up, they're getting involved this year. Um, so we were strategic in how we did our recruitment and that we were hoping for a large pool of women identifying volunteers, preferably with experience in fly fishing or in STEM industries. Uh, we really do believe it is important to provide the Girl Scouts representation within this program. Um, and that is not saying that we don't have any male volunteers and they're more than welcome. Um, so for example, we did heavy recruiting within the Colorado Women Fly Fishers and the Women in Oil and Gas Association. For the Montrose event last year, we partnered with Able Women Fly Fishing. Um, and if we may get down to Durango at any point, which we're hoping to, um, we will definitely be reaching out to the Women of Braided, which is a women's fly fishing group. So there are tons of groups and spaces that are specific to women anglers and scientists that we can recruit from and you know partner with to do things like this. Um, so for each event, the Stream Girls Pool is the first to receive notification about any events. And we definitely see a lot of repeat volunteers and we have volunteers that are traveling quite far to go to these events. Um, so even if it's not in their, um, even their watershed, they're going to these events because they're just, I, I guess, dedicated to the program, which is great. Um, so even though we do have this great base pool of volunteers, recruiting new volunteers is a big responsibility for the local chapter. Um, and hopefully with groups similar to, you know, see, uh, Colorado Women Fly Fishers and things like that, so. So, uh, so in 2019, when we started doing this event, uh, we, Barbara and I held one in-person volunteer training. And this included volunteers from two of the events, but we ended up having a total of five events that year. Um, so instead of holding more than one in-person training, we chose to have a pre-event volunteer conference call where we took them through the day and let them ask questions that they had. Um, and when creating this program, National TU put together a great package of training materials including a webinar, training video, and a volunteer guide. So this makes it easier to skip the in-person training day, although we do feel that it, I mean, it's definitely the most effective way of getting volunteers ready for the event is with the in-person training. So for 2020, Barbara and I decided to go about it a little differently. We are planning to have both a Front Range and Western Slope in-person training for our volunteers. We put together our list of front range events and planned our training based on that. And we announced the dates as soon as possible so people could get it on their calendars. And we're hoping to do something similar with the Western Slope. But I, I mean, so far this, this strategy is working. So we will probably replicate that in the years to come. So. Can I say something about that? Yeah, totally. The, it, you know, from my perspective as uh, kind of the wrangler in, in leading these events, um when when we slipped over to doing just like a a uh, a phone conference training for volunteers that was after we already had like a core group of trained volunteers yeah. so that we can pair people that have had um some experience with people that have not had any experience with going through a stream girls day um, so that's when that um, works and that's kind of what I was you know referring to earlier also Ruthie is um, you know if we have people that can't just absolutely you know, like to do this but absolutely can't make the training we can make it work because we have enough volunteers that have done you know now done multiple events that we can pair people up on the day of and they'll be just fine yeah that's a good so point. What's the best way then to um, refer those folks to the to the program? Um, we we have them go ahead and register. Okay. For one of the events. Okay, sounds good. If you still want to do it, register for an event, and um, we're pretty close to full on our northern events. Mm -hmm. uh, 
we Great. need more volunteers for Colorado Springs event, and we could use a couple more volunteers for the Littleton one also. Yeah. And that will probably have the most kids. Last year, that's that one was completely um, packed. You know, we, we, I think they had a waiting kit list for kids on that one. Yeah. The Littleton one. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think Barbara mentioned this earlier, but um, we're hoping to have a stream girls leader training in the future. Um, but yeah, as she mentioned, uh, as yeah, that's one thing that we're working on. Yeah. Also, so that because just the practicality of uh, us doing every event, it, you know, we're starting to grow enough that it's just not, it's not practical anymore for us to do every event. We physically can do it. Yeah. So we need more leaders. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so hopefully we'll be able to do that um, in the future. Um, but at this point, I think shadowing Barbara is the best way to go about becoming a leader for these events. Um, okay, so, all right, so I'm going to show you the Stream Girls resources. Hopefully this works. <laughs> um, let me know if it is not working. So, Can you guys see that? Um, uh, we see the Carson Center trout release logistics. Huh. Okay. If you share your you desktop and then bring the program forward, it will work. Maybe. Oh, wait. Now, do you see the Stream Girls Activity Kit? Yes, we do. Cool. All right. So, well, yes, yeah, I'll show you guys since I mentioned that earlier. So, this is the document that has all the um, the items that is in the kit, um, and then this kind of looks similar to a lot of the documents that we have in our manual, which I'll show you in a moment. And then, so the remaining event cost for the chapters, and so I'm just going to start. This is our front page um, of the website. So go to conservation um, and then go down to youth education. And this is where you will find all of our current programs. So you can go to Stream Girls. And right now I'm just showing you where the, our main page is. I'm gonna show you specific chapter resources as well. So this is where you'll find all the current events and all the current information about, about the program. And you can see you can register to volunteer and whatnot. So, okay, so chapter resources, go up to the main bar, chapters, and then down to resources. We have a ton of resources here, so if, for a bunch of things, so just visit it if you have time to do so. But the Stream Girls has its own page, so I'll open that. And that's where you will find our manual, and the manual has everything you would really ever need for Stream Girls. Um, and I'll show you that really quickly. So it has information, has a quick table of contents. Um, what is the program? Activity descriptions. So essentially what Barbara and I went over. Um, it also has what you'll find in the equipment kit or what equipment you will need for the event. And right here is the chapter information. So the partnership overview, essentially what I was saying, um, it reiterates what I was saying, um, how we established with the partnership with Girl Scouts of Colorado, and then it also has roles and responsibilities, the equipment kit document, remaining costs, information about our volunteer pool, and then an event checklist, which I'll show you right now because I think that's a really useful document um, if you're putting on your own event. Um, so we created this and it has, so it has, it's kind of a checklist it has three to six months prior um, and everything kind of leading up to the event and what you will need to do. Um, but if you're putting on your first event, you know, I'll be there to guide you as well. Um, this is kind of just for the future. If you need to go back on that. And then finding a venue. So I'll show you that as well. 
So it has everything that I just said on here. Okay, and so we also put in here our resources that we've created um, as we've started these events. So we have our sample event plan. Um, so this is something that each event will have and this um, will probably be, will be up to the event leader, but like I said, I can help guide you for those first, that first time. It'll have your volunteer list, and this is what goes to volunteers. So it's a super detailed um, plan of the event, and we also have a shortened, uh, quick event schedule as well, which is more so for parents and troop leaders. Um, so everything will be predetermined as like where the um, activities are gonna happen. Um, you should definitely do a, um, site visit, obviously, before you um, have your event, so you can tell, you know, where you're going to do the macro um, activity, where you're going to do go with the flow. Um, so it'll be good. This will determine um, the leader of the event, the timekeeper, um, will break you all up into teams. And like Barbara said earlier, this will all be um, based on your skills and your skill set and what you are able to do um, as a volunteer and a leader and that type of thing. Um, Okay, so there's the one day schedule like I talked about, a uh, stream girls event flyer that you can um, use to make your own, the Girl Scout evaluation, which all the Girl Scouts will need to fill out um, before leaving, and that's something that I would like to have sent back to me. Um, we also have a volunteer evaluation. So after each event, we um, send out this evaluation, and we send out pictures, that type of thing. Um, and, I'll, and I'll be doing that, um, but just so you guys know. And then also the Girl Scout packing list. Um, so just so it's known, the Girl Scouts at this point, they have all of these documents that they need to send out to the Girl Scouts. So they have this packing list already. Um, they also have all of our waivers that is that are going to be sent out to all the Girl Scouts prior to the event. Um, so speaking of the waivers, um, Okay, so each Girl Scout will have to fill out a CTU photo waiver, a uh, Girl Scout photo release, and then our Trout Unlimited Youth Liability Waiver. Each of the Girl Scouts' parents or troop leaders will also have to fill out um, the photo waivers for both CTU and Girl Scouts, and then also, and then, yeah, so just the photo waivers, because they'll obviously be in photos because they hang around all day. Um, our volunteers are gonna have to fill out the Child Unlimited Adult Liability Waiver and the Emergency Contact Form. And this is something that I'll be sending out to them in emails um, prior to the event or in person at our volunteer training, um, but just so you guys have that information. And then, like I said earlier, National Child Unlimited has a, tons of re has a ton of resources as well. So I listed those here. Um, they have, there's the volunteer guide, the training webinar, the dichotomous keys. Um, you can do bulk youth membership form. Um, and then the field handbook, which is all of the volunteers will get as well. So yeah, that is the manual. If you ever have any questions about using it or if something's not working, please let me know, like a link. Um, here, all right, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. Let's see if I can manage to do that. Okay. All right. Do you guys see the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So really quickly before we wrap up, I wanted to make known our current events for 2020. So the training is on March 28th in Littleton, and then we have four events lined up already. Uh, Greeley, Littleton, Colorado Springs, and Longmont. And like it's our, we've already said, Greeley and Longmont are pretty much full. Um, so we're not accepting more volunteers for that. Um, and then we're trying to figure out our Western Slope events. So we'll probably be adding a few more into that list. Um, I think we would, I mean, we would take one or two more. If yeah. somebody really wanted to volunteer, I would take one or two more. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. And I think, yeah, and I think if anyone's interested in having this event, um, like taking this to their chapter, I think, you know, we're more than welcome to have you. Um, so, yeah. Okay. And then I wanted to mention that, um, as you, you may have noticed, fishing is not part of this. <laughs> so, and that's because, like we said, we squeeze the programming into one day. 
Um, but Barbara and I are kind of hoping to um, to kick off this like this idea of a culmination event. So we're going to try and do one this year. Um, and essentially, it'll just be a fishing day and probably fly, fly tying day as well for Stream Girls graduates that were really into the fly fit, fly casting aspect of the program and want to do more with that. Um, so we're going to pilot that this year and see how that goes. And hopefully that'll be something that we can continue on and spread out geographically. Um, but yeah, I guess that that's really it. If you have any questions, um, let me know. And here's Barbara and I's uh, contact information. But yeah, that's about it. Barbara, did you, do you have anything else that you want to add in there? Yeah, I guess, you know, in the terms of we have, um, Pretty, uh, pretty close to the right amount of volunteers for the Greeley and Longmont events, but I would take a couple more because things happen and we always seem to have some volunteers um, that can't make it at the last minute. So, um, that, that's one reason I, I would take a couple more. Okay, well, Oh, it's about 6.30, so yeah, um, I think- Any questions for questions? I do have some questions, but um, unfortunately, I need to excuse myself. I have a conservation meeting starting at 6.30, um, but thanks, ladies. This was really helpful. Well, give one of us a call. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. And we'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you. you too, Ruthie. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, Barbara, I'm going to end the meeting. Okay, thank you. You did a good job. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye.